year, Australia exports enough uranium to power the whole of the national electricity market, yet state and federal legislation prohibits the serious consideration of nuclear power. It is unclear why the ban remains when there is strong evidence that nuclear power brings many advantages, some of which I would like to state before the committee. Nuclear power powers, provides clean, zero emissions baseload generation. Nuclear power is reliable and has a global average capacity factor or availability of 80% and 90% in the US. Nuclear reactors can operate from 40 to 60 years and possibly up to 100, contributing to any nation's energy security. Nuclear power is concentrated and has an extremely small footprint that will free up arable land for cattle and farming. Can you just go back and explain to me why do you believe that the new form of modular reactors will provide the cheapest form of power in Australia? The cheapest form of zero emission power that's available 24 7. Right. We think that because the small modular reactors, by their design, which is their fabrication process with modularisation, that is, the analogy is look at an aircraft factory where you have plane after plane lined up. They're all built to the same design, they're not built to slightly different. And that is what drives economies of scale. And we think that once that occurs, and so this is once that commercial um, production occurs, you'll start to see the cost of this energy come right down the cost curve. Uh, Dr Ho, can you just tell us if uh, a small modular reactor, about 40 to 50 megawatts, and so people know, what is the comparison to that to, for instance, a wind farm? I imagine a wind tower is around about four, four megawatts of wind tower but of course they don't operate all day. Yeah, that's a great question. And actually, it brings to mind the importance of nuclear being able to firm or provide backup power to wind farms. I, I believe, uh, I actually remember a study done by NewScale, which used to have one module being able to provide backup power for an entire uh, wind farm called the Horsebuck Wind Farm in the US. And that wind farm has a capacity combined of 57 megawatts. And how many towers would that be? Uh, I would be not hazard to guess, but I would say yeah. about 30. About 30. Okay, thank you. Um, with scientists, where do the actual scientists, where do we get, where do we get these scientists from? The, the, skill set. the skill set. Where does the skill set come from? So the engineering, we've built up over the last decade a new kind of engineering capability, which we didn't have before. We've probably got now around uh, 70 competent nuclear engineers on site um, who can help design uh, nuclear facilities and, and look up, supervise their construction. Um, there is, there was a period of some, a couple of decades where there wasn't a nuclear engineering capability at university level in Australia. But the University of New South Wales a few years ago reintroduced a nuclear engineering course. So there is now a tertiary qualification for nuclear engineering. Sorry, was it New South Wales? Said that University of New South Wales, yes. 